Hey, what's up to the Mr. Buck Nation subscribers, to the uh, Buccaneer fan base. Hey, this Shaq Barrett checking in. Hey, it's going to be an exciting year this year. I'm excited. I'm ready for it. I've been storing up everything I got. Man, I haven't been storing it up, but I've been having to store it up because I haven't been playing as much as I wanted to. But everything is coming, man. It's coming right on time. I'm trying to tell you it's going to be a great year. I'm going to... I got it. Hey, I ain't gonna tell you how many sacks I'm gonna get. I'm gonna produce. I'm gonna make plays. I'm gonna do everything. It ain't just about sacks, sacks, fours, fumbles, TFLs. I want some picks. I want everything. I want to do everything. So it's gonna be a good year, man. I'm excited to be here. Appreciate all the support, man. And just y'all be ready to uh, let's roll with the Bucks this year because it's gonna be a good one. Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and welcome back to my Mr. Bucks Nation Mock Draft 4.0. Again, you guys know the drill, the draftnetwork.com slash mock draft machine. If you want to go check it out, link to it will be at the top of the description below. And if you guys want, go ahead and submit your mock drafts down in the comment section below. It actually gives me great insight on the types of players you guys want me to do research on and the types of players that you want to address the Buccaneers needs, be it at certain starting positions or for Buccaneers depth and overall core of this team so again you guys know the drill seven rounds the draft network's predictive board fast draft pick speed and manual draft pick so without further ado guys let's get started now, this situation happened in my previous mock draft, which again was probably worst case scenario. In this situation, the Buccaneers should probably trade down. Nick Bosa went number one, John Allen went number two, Quinn Williams number three, Devin White number four. This could realistically happen. So, for the purposes of this draft pick, I was... Uh, gonna go with a guy like Jawan Taylor, but I realized, oh wait, I already picked a guy like Jawan Taylor, so I'm gonna go a little bit of a different route. I'm actually gonna address edge rusher early on for this team. I'm gonna go with Rashawn Gary. Now, Shaq Barrett was already added to the team, and I personally think he's going to be a very, very good starter, but I want to bring in somebody to pair up with him, and Rashawn Gary is a pretty high-end option to pair up with a guy like Shaq Barrett and wreak havoc on quarterbacks. Now, what can be said about a guy like like Rashawn Gary, six foot four, 281 pounds. He's got the mental fortitude. He's got the technique and he's got the pass rushing ability to ruin the lives of opposing quarterbacks come game day. And whenever you pair up a guy like Rashawn Gary with guys like Shaq Barrett, Gerald McCoy, Vita Vea, Jason Pierre Paul, and Carl Nassib, you are going to get some very dangerous situations and some pretty insane pass rushing ability. So that is why for the purposes of this fifth overall draft pick, I'm going to go with edge rusher out of Michigan, Rashawn Gary. Moving on to round number two, and I'm again going to address the defense, specifically at the cornerback position. I'm going to go with Justin Lane, cornerback out of Michigan State. And again, this guy is six foot three, 185 pounds okay he's got amazing man-to-man -man coverage he's got amazing tackling ability and he's got amazing physicality now he does have certain problems like you can see with zone coverage but really in Todd Bull's defense you need man-to-man -man coverage corners which is why Justin Lane is arguably a very very perfect pick for this second round now I've seen a lot of people say James you don't need to add more young secondary pieces on this defense we have enough already but my opinion on that is you can never have enough young secondary pieces. Just keep on adding. Keep on building up that core. Just keep on adding to this young secondary and keep on building up that talent. That's the way I think about it. And that is why I'm going to go with Justin Lane here. Pair him up with some guys like Vernon Hargraves, Carlton Davis, a veteran that will probably be signed later on for the cornerback position. Guys like Ryan Smith as well. You have an overall pretty solid depth position at the cornerback room. So that is why I'm going to go with Justin Lane, cornerback out of of Michigan State with my second round draft pick. In the third round of this draft, I'm actually going to go with offensive tackle Michael Dieter out of Wisconsin, who is just a freak athlete for the offensive tackle position. I see him as an eventual successor to a guy like DeMar Dodson, and just keep on building up your overall offensive line depth with second, third round draft picks. It's what the Buccaneers have been doing for the past couple of years. I think that that streak is going to continue here with a guy like Michael Dieter. Again, eventual successor to a guy like DeMar Dodson, a very athletic tackle, which 
I think is a very important thing. He does have a little bit of problem with his overall length and extension, but I think that that is a problem that obviously um, can be fixed with the right kind of coaching and the right kind of technique. You can kind of overcome that obstacle of size um, and whatnot. I think that that is a very overcomable obstacle with the right type of coaching and technique, which is why for the purposes of this mock draft, I'm going to go with Michael Dieter out of Wisconsin, the offensive tackle. So there you go. Now I know there's a lot of running backs on this board, and I am selecting a running back with this pick. Miles Sanders just went the pick before, but I wasn't going to select him anyway because, quite honestly, I don't think he's going to be here in the fourth round. I'm going to go with a little bit of a different running back. Now, I know that the running backs, guys like Darrell Henderson, David Montgomery, Damian Harris, Justin Hill, and Devin Singletary are all here, but whenever I look into these running backs, I see one of two things. Either they're more built like a guy like Peyton Barber, or they're more built like a guy like Ronald Jones, and I want to do something a little bit different at this running back position. I want to try and address something that the Buccaneers don't necessarily have a solid option for in that running back room right now, and that is a receiving back, which is why I'm actually going to go with Trayvon Williams running back out of Texas A&M, who was used pretty much exclusively as a receiving back. Yes, he obviously did get his licks in as a pure runner as well, but this guy was used so, so much as a receiving back. 5'9", 200 pounds. He does have a little bit of weight on him. Keep that one in mind. And this guy was just a phenomenal receiving back back at Texas A&M. He was used in droves in the receiving game. And I feel... Pairing him up with an offense like Byron Leftwich, like the one that Bruce Arians runs, who kind of like to use the running back in terms of an overall passing game, I feel this pick could be really, really nice. Obviously, I like a guy like Peyton Barber, I like a guy like Ronald Jones, but being able to bring in a running back who does something completely different than both of those guys, and that is a running back that has receiving ability, is something that I think could be a very, very valuable addition to that running back room, and that is why I'm selecting Trayvon Williams, running back out of Texas A&M, with my next pick. Next pick here, pick 1 45. And you know, I really thought about going wide receiver. I've literally selected a wide receiver in every single pick so far in all of my other mock drafts. So I'm going to continue the trend. I, I faked you out there. I swerved you for a second, but I'm actually going to go ahead and pick another wide receiver here. And there's a couple of very decent options. Guys like Demarcus Lodge, guys like Stanley Morgan Jr., Terry Godwin, who I've picked before, Preston Williams. But I'm actually going to go with Key Sean Johnson, wide receiver out of Fresno State, six foot one. 202 pounds. He's got very good route running and arguably the best hands in this draft, which is insanely, insanely valuable to me. And I think that again, I've said this before about all the other wide receivers, about Terry Godwin, Hunter Renfro, and Paris Campbell. I think that he could be a solid addition. A replacement to Adam Humphreys? Sure, why not? Anybody's a replacement to Adam Humphreys and to Sean Jackson these days. So go ahead and throw that moniker on him. But I just think that it would be a solid wide receiver addition to add to that wide receiver room that, again, lost a couple of key players and could use a shot of depth. And I think, you know, with Justin Watson, Sergio Bailey, Bobo Wilson, and all the other guys I've named in previous uh, videos past, I think the Keyshawn Johnson could be a very solid addition to that wide receiver core. And that's why I'm selecting him with my 145th overall pick. For my next pick, I was going to go linebacker, but honestly, a lot of the linebackers I was thinking about picking are gone, so now you have guys in the late 270s in their overall draft rank, so I'm not going to go with them. I'm going to go with the guy who could possibly play a little bit of linebacker, depending on how you want to use him. It is safety Sheldrick Redwine out of Miami, and I know people are going to say, James, we don't need another safety. We have enough safeties right now as is, and fair credit, we certainly have a lot of safeties on this roster, and it seems like the Buccaneers are looking to add more with certain free and visits and whatnot, but I feel like Sheldrick Redwine could be a guy who could really play a little bit of linebacker as well. Six foot one, 195 pounds, very good in man coverage and a very, very physical, a very in the box type of safety. And I feel that he could have a very similar role to a guy like a Dion Buchanan, where he's playing all over the place, playing a little bit of linebacker, a little bit of safety, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I feel that he's another depth piece that you could have in that type of role. It certainly doesn't hurt um, to have that kind of situation happen. Happen, and I know that I haven't addressed linebacker in this mock draft, but I feel that by getting Sheldrick Renwine here, I am in a way addressing that because I feel that you could use him in this uh, Todd Bowles-esque defensive scheme as a linebacker given certain packages and certain situations. So that's why I'm going with Sheldrick, Re uh, sorry, Sheldrick Redwine safety out of Miami with this pick. 
final draft pick here, and literally everybody's been saying James are the Bucks gonna draft a quarterback. James are the Bucks gonna draft a quarterback. Hey James, are the Bucks gonna draft a quarterback? And really, I don't think they are going to. But again, I'm trying to do some different things in these mock drafts. So let's just say, well, maybe the Buccaneers want to pick a quarterback. Where and who should they necessarily pick? Well, I think probably with their last round draft pick might be somewhere where they would say, okay, maybe let's bring in a guy and have him compete for a backup quarterback spot. And I really like Brett Rippon here, a quarterback out of Boise State. This guy doesn't have the best pocket awareness, but I think that is something you could certainly work on with the right types of coaching and whatnot. You obviously have Byron Leftwich there and Bruce Arians. They're pretty much quarterback. Well, Bruce Arians is a quarterback whisperer. Brian Leftwich is getting there, but Brett, Brett Rippon, his best stat is his accuracy, and I think that is very valuable for a backup quarterback. Just bring in an accurate arm, and I think that overall you should be decent as long as they have a very powerful arm, uh, or a powerful enough arm, I guess I should say. So that's why, with this last overall draft pick I'm gonna go with Brett Rippon quarterback out of Boise State and that's it guys definitely a much more different mock draft than I've done in the past obviously we addressed edge rusher with Rashawn Gary with the fifth overall pick pair him up with a guy like Shaq Barrett pair him up with some guys like Gerald McCoy Vita Vea Jason Pierre-Paul and Carl Nassib and let's just see that pass rushing attack which was much improved last year go and go out there and improve yet again Justin Lane cornerback out of Michigan State probably a very awesome pick in my opinion one of the better man-to-man -man corners um, that I saw saw on the board at that time and I think that he'd be an awesome addition to that cornerback room Michael Dieter offensive tackle out of Wisconsin again another guy who could eventually replace DeMar Dodson and just continuing to invest in that offensive line with second and third round draft picks Trayvon Williams running back out of Texas A&M Possibly my favorite draft pick out of this entire mock draft just because of the receiving ability that he has. I feel that if you put him in this Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich offense, he would honestly be amazing, okay? Like, I seriously think that he has some phenomenal ability if you put him in the right passing attack type of offense. He could do some awesome things. I would be very excited if the Buccaneers got Trayvon Williams. Next, you have wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson. Again, not related to the former Buccaneers wide receiver who has some very good route running and some very, very, very good hands. He He's a solid addition to the wide receiver room. Next, you have safety Sheldrick Redwine out of Miami. Again, a guy who you can play at a lot of different positions, be it linebacker, be it edge rusher, be it safety, wherever you want to put him. Kind of have that similar type of money back or role that a guy like Dion Buchanan has. Just put him anywhere, you know, put him put him in a lot of different places and see where he fits best. That's where I think that you could succeed. And then Brett Rippon, quarterback out of Boise State. Again, he'd be backing up, he'd be um, battling for a backup quarterback job with a guy like Ryan Griffin. I think he would possibly win out and I think that you know he might become a fan favorite in terms of a backup quarterback just because you know, I think that he could have a really accurate arm and he has a strong enough arm. So I think that he could do an overall good job. But let me know what you guys think about this mock draft down in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you change based on the players that you saw on the board in the rounds that I selected my players? Let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the little surprise at the beginning of the video. Again, shout out to Shaq Barrett. Thank you for doing that. Greatly appreciated. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream but until then and as always guys goodbye for now and go bucks